This is a quick overview of the rocket launch station. This box can control four air-powered rocket launchers at a time, so students can race. The main things to check will first be setting up the physical connections. So you have your launch controllers here. You can uh, have up to four of them, but you only need two to actually launch the system. The rocket launch uh, controllers, they plug into this front panel here. You can see the connectors are keyed, so uh, make sure that little notch goes up and then they'll plug right in. The other part is there are four of these ports on each corner and you have the air port with a quick connect for the air tube and then also another quick uh, electronic connection to actually trigger the rocket launcher to go off. Whenever this valve is like this, that means that it is closed, but whenever it is like that, then now it is open. So if you only have two rocket launchers attached, then you'll want to make sure that the valve is open so the air will go out to it. The air is input through this quick connect here. So this manifold will be connected through an air tube to the system. You can have four bike pumps on it and that will pressurize the system. And then this uh, has a pressure gauge here and also a blow off valve so that the students can't pump it up too high. Um, so that will blow at 100 PSI. So they should only ever be going up to about 30 PSI. So uh, we don't ever need to go any higher than that. Plus, hopefully the kids will get worn out from pumping it up. Uh, then here, again, uh, the air comes in through here, is displayed on the pressure gauge, and uh, the blow-off valve is in the system, so it'll keep it from getting overpressurized. But then that air goes out through these four outputs to each rocket launcher, so all of the rocket launchers are pressurized with the same pressure. That's very important if they want to race, so no one has an advantage. All the rocket launchers are the same volume, and these check valves prevent uh, any air from coming back. So if a rocket, if a launcher does go off before another one, then that pressure doesn't siphon back and uh, lose pressure for someone else. So now you can see I've plugged in two launch controllers, and it doesn't matter which ones. Um, are plugged in as long as you have at least two of them. So the other thing we need to do is plug in this air hose. So all the quick connects are the same. They have this black ring here that uh, you can push in if you can kind of see that. So all you have to do to insert it is just press the piece in and now it's held in. To release it, it's uh, you press the black ring towards the metal and then you also pull this out. It's kind of hard to do one-handed, but there you go. So now that after you get all the air tubes plugged in and all of the electrical connections uh, with these extension cables out to the launchers and all the air tubes plugged into the launchers, then you'll be ready to start powering it up. Now a very important part is using these lithium polymer batteries. These, uh, if discharged too much, can damage the batteries and they can start a fire, so you need to be careful with them. So the battery compartment is right here, so the battery will sit in here and it will plug into this XT60 connector. Now there's also this capacity controller, so you can verify how much is charged. You can see I plugged it in with uh, the ground is up here, so the black wire is there and the red indicates that that's one of the positive sides. So, But you can see we are sitting at 89% battery. You never want one of these batteries to go below like 30 or 25% really. Um, so uh, just keep that in mind and you'll want to check this every so often, um, but the launch controller should tell you if the battery is too low. 
All right, so we've got our air tubes connected. We've got the launch controllers uh, all plugged in and ready to go. Um, we've got the battery is checked and it is uh, plugged in and ready. Uh, and then all of the launchers say that those are all connected as well. We also have a uh, warning light. So you can see that gets plugged in right here to the console. So that can be staked into the ground um, and then helps display when the system is armed. So with that, uh, oh, the other important step before we do anything is making sure that the valves are open to each system. So if we have four launchers, we will want to open each. So make sure that the valve is in line. And then now that one's open and that one. So now the system is all ready to go and we can power it on. So the first thing to check for the power on is this emergency stop switch. If this is pressed down, then um, it is no, there's no power to the system at all. So we can twist this and then it pops up. So you can see that, so it pops up. So now we can power the system. Um, now there's the power button here. You have to press and hold this button until this light flashes blue. So let's go and do that. Okay, there we go. So now the system is on, but it's not gonna do anything, but you can see some of the lights are on down here and the microcontroller, this is the uh, flight computer that actually controls all like the whole system and, uh, and the relays and all their wires. So system's on and we're ready to start. Now, some of the other important features of this box, you have the siren enable. So zero for off, one is on. Um, so this air raid siren will start sounding whenever the uh, system is armed. So it's just an extra warning to let people know, hey, like you're about to launch um, and it helps to help people to stand clear. And then there's also this uh, sequence switch. So whenever this is off in the zero position, then all the rockets launch at the exact same time. So uh, that's good for like racing and stuff. Whenever you turn it on to one, then that enables a sequence launch. So rocket one will launch, then rocket two, uh, then rocket three, then rocket four. So uh, they launch very quickly, but it's, uh, it's kind of a neat sequence to watch them all like choo, 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 choo. so um yeah that's an option depending on what you're wanting to do and what the kids want to see uh so now that the system is on uh we've got power plugged in got the launch controllers let's go ahead and arm the system so you can see with these buttons if uh the system's not armed if they press this launch button nothing happens and uh they can even both press the launch buttons at the same time. They're not going to work unless the system's armed. So in order to do that, so you have to flip this toggle safety cover up and then flip that on. Now you can still see nothing's actually going on, but this light turned, it's a yellowish color. Um, but then if I go ahead and flip the second switch, then now you can see uh, these lights turn green, the status light turned uh, green, and it is saying the system is armed and ready. Uh, now again, if you press either one of these individually, it isn't going to launch. And also I have the siren disabled, but to give you an idea. So that's why it's disabled because it's very loud and it draws a lot of power too. So we may want to leave that off at times. Um, okay, but now so that since we're armed, um, we have a sequence launch turned off, so it's going to launch all of them at the same time. And then all you have to do is press both of these at the same time, and it will launch. So you want to do like a countdown or something with the students, and then say like three, two, one, and then... And now the rocket's all launched. But now you can see the status lights are red. So what that means is you have to disarm them before you can launch again. You, you cannot 
these buttons don't do anything until after you've disarmed. So I can disarm, and then I can even try to rearm this, and again, it just turns red. Nothing is going to work. So you have to fully disarm the system, and then uh, you can use it again. So turn all the toggles off, and then now if we rearm it, now you can see it's ready to go, and you can have multiple people um, arm it, and it will work just like before. But again, you have to have two to arm it at a time, otherwise nothing will work. All right, um, so again, just careful with the battery. Uh, you can use the battery checker and take note of which side is the ground, that uh, negative-like sign. Um, and then other than that, to turn the system off, all you have to do is press this button and now the system is off. And you can double check that by looking in here and there's no lights, but if you can't remember that, just take the battery out. Um, all you have to do is unplug this uh, yellow connector and now power is definitely off. Now, what do you do if the launcher turns itself off? That probably means that the battery is too low. So if it stops responding to all the input and it seems like it turned itself off. You can double check the safety switch, make sure that if you twist that over, then it's off. Uh, but then now if I press and power, uh, press and hold the power switch, then it should turn blue. But if it flashes yellow afterwards, that means the battery's too low and you'll hear it click itself off. So I'll press that. So now system's on and then that flashing means that it's going to shut itself off. And now you can see there's no lights, there's no anything. If you, you can try this as many times as you want, but it's going to keep on saying the battery's too low and it's going to shut itself off. And so once it does that, then you can't use the launcher. If that happens, swap out the battery and put the battery on the charger so that it's ready to go for the next time.